Well, good morning, everyone. Ah, it rained pretty hard last night. Today's project is one that I've been postponing for quite some time. But lo and behold, we're going to do the safety plus today. Or at least attempt it. Let's get some lights on and start gathering up our tools. All right, I think I've got everything gathered up that I need. We've got the U-bolts with a 9 16 socket for mounting the, onto the tie rod end. There's the big bracket that goes onto the spring, or the U-bolt on the, on the front axle, inch and an eighth impact socket, impact driver, torque wrench, blow torch to try and uh, soften them up, and or WD-40 to try and soften them up. When we go to put everything back together, we've got both our red and blue. Um, I mentioned a torque wrench, there's a safety plus, and of course a creeper, and the instruction manual. The one thing that we did forget that we need to have is we need to have a neighbor, Mr. Carl, who is going to be able to hand me tools while I'm laying underneath and help me when we get it all on to take it out for a test drive. So let's crawl underneath, see what we got going. The only other thing you need it's a very bright light to light up the subject. So I've got a big giant 300 watt halogen that I use. All right, got the video set up. Let's see just how tight and how dirty these guys are. Right now they're actually look like they're already lubed up that's from when I changed the uh, fuel filters um, it lubed everything up let's give it a shot they're not budging Not at all. Yep. And yeah, that's definitely loose, lefty loosey. Have you got a breaker? I do have a breaker bar. I'm gonna put some WD-40 on here real quick. Not sure if it'll help. Did you say you had a breaker? I do. What, what drawer is it in? Um, it's not in the toolbox. It's up in my truck. Let me come on out. All right, I went and got my breaker bar and a cheater bar. I'm gonna try that. If this doesn't work, if I can't get this, then I think what I'll do is torch it up a little bit. Yep, lefty, Lucy. Let's see what happens. Holy tamole. It's not budging. Nope, it ain't budging. I think what we're going to do is throw a little more WD-40 on it, let it sit for a little bit, and then I'll get out the uh, blowtorch and see if I can heat it up. Because most likely they put a, a red Loctite on there. Okay, we're going in for our third attempt. Let's see how this one goes. Yep. 
absolutely nothing. Let's try my neighbor's impact wrench, see if that's any stronger. Attempt number four. This time we've got my neighbor's impact wrench. If this doesn't work, then I'm going to start torching. Oh, yeah. some air pressure back up. Okay, the compressor's back up to 150 PSI. Let's see if we can get this side loose. I sure do hope so. plate. Now, now that I've opened up my Loctite, let's put a couple of drops on here. Now, it goes this way. The angle goes towards the driver's side and the curve goes up and over the tie rod end, or tie rod. Just like that. Can you hand me one of those flashlights, Mr. Carl? Thank you. Oh, I screwed up big time. What'd you do? I don't have it in the frickin' hole properly. Crap. Undo everything and redo it. What's happened is, I don't know if you can see, you're looking through here. Can you see these two holes? The yeah. elongated hole in this one? Yeah. The U-bolt is right on the very edge of this. When it gets started on this, it's scraping really hard on this. These holes need to be further open or the U-bolt needs to be further closed. Uh. It's been tight in there. Well, it's supposed to be tight, right? Yeah. It does not look like I've bent it. But now that I've got that up, I might be able to... See, it's hitting, it's in here, and it's right at the very edge of this, and it's, it's too tight. And you can see I actually bent that a smidgen. Let me see what happens if I try and push it down just a little bit. See, that won't go in that hole. There we go. Now let's see if I can... Holy cow, I'm getting it. Did it do enough to start the nuts? Instead of... I've got enough to start the nuts, but man, I don't want to screw up the threads. Well, he ain't going to hurt the threads. 
You got a washer goes on there? Yeah, it's on there. Not enough not enough threads to make me comfortable tighten up. Let me keep wiggling it. I'm not going to use your air gun to tighten it. I'm going to use my electric and go a little slower and a little softer. Just about the end of the stroke with the electric one. Yeah, well. All right, so that plate is now mounted. Yep. And now what we're going to do is actually mount the unit itself. If I can get in here. Oh man, this thing is not. Uh, all right. Now, according to the directions, the washer goes on the safety plus side and the bolt goes up. So this is how it's gonna go and then this is gonna go in between. Assuming I can hold it up, because it's pretty heavy. Got your washer on there. Got the washer on there. Putting it in the outside one. All right. And that gives us the basic idea of where it's going to go. Yeah, well, I'm just trying to make sure that we have it high enough because I want it higher than the axle. And by mounting it on the bottom of this bracket, it will be higher than the axle, which is the most important thing to me. So now, let me see if I can get the U-bolts over here installed. So now the U-bolts and the bracket. The directions say the U-bolts go up like this, but the pictures show them going down. We're just gonna put the bracket on and see where it sits. The groove in here goes on the bottom of that, and the U-bolts go in here. Now 
I'm just gonna get it started and then I am going to set it up there and see. So if I put this up on top like that, that's the way it's going to go. If I put the U-bolts going up, then the bracket would be up here. Well, that may be the same. We, you know what? I may have to do it that way because right now this has got to go up that high. No, I think we got it. I think we got it. Let me get these puppies snug. You want to hand me that other uh, bolt? Yep. Will do. Thank you. Does it matter according to the directions whether I use the hole closest to the or further? I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? Well, it shows to be on the outside. Well, I'm thinking that it's got to be on the yeah because it'll hit the this side of the shock will hit the bracket, so That's it's got to be on this side. Yeah. Well, you know what? When I raise that one up, that's in the center. You know what? I'm going to have to put the U bolts going the other way, Mr. Carl. In order to get it leveled, because this end right now, unless I rotate this up a little bit. Oh, yeah, I can just rotate it up a little bit. There we go. Yeah. Now it'll be level. Yeah. All right. So let me get the thing snugged up. On this side. Get this one partially snug and then I'll adjust the U-bolts. So I'm going to tilt it up like that, and that's fairly flush with it. Even if I was to put it on the top, it would still be an issue, I think, because it's still higher than that. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, so before I tighten up the U-bolts, 
I'm going to eyeball the front tires as straight as possible, then I'm gonna loosen them, let it self-center, and then tighten it back up. But let me get the front tires as straight as possible in line with the back tires. It's getting a little skinny under here because the directions say have all their jacks up and all the weight on the tires. And that's what we got. Right now I am going to torque the large bolts on the end of each, each end of the shock to the 120 foot pounds. It's moving on me as I'm trying to torque it. You mean your uh... the plate with the U bolts? I'm gonna have to tighten that at least where it's at before I enough that it doesn't move. And I gotta be careful because that's only 20 foot pounds. It's tight enough anyhow. If the clamps, if the clamps are tight on the tie rods ends. Well, let me change this down to 20. Oh, that's already a 20. I, I, I figured it would be. 20 ain't very damn much. But it's still pivoting. Well. I don't know if it's the whole, t whole tie rod that's moving or if it's pivoting on it. I don't think. Now, it can move a little in the, ball, in the, in the, in the balls. Is that what's happening? I don't know. Let me put some torque on it. If I could get where I could see the tie rod. Yeah, it's the whole it's the whole thing. Well, I don't know. Yeah, that is. That's the whole tie rod's moving. Okay, it's moving in the balls. In the tie rod end ball. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Okay, it's it's, it's it's not pivoting where they clamp it down when they do the adjustment at the tie rod end and the tie rod. It's, it's rotating. It's rotating the in the balls. It's not really changing the the length of it or anything. It's just rotating on the ball. Yep, I see it exactly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around to show what we're talking about. As I was tightening this, you saw it going up and down, and the whole tie rod was moving but it wasn't moving at the adjustment point for an alignment. It was actually rotating, the ball was rotating in here. So it wasn't changing the adjustment at all. So, so with that said, it's on. I'm gonna wait until the roads are dry because the rig is clean, but I'm gonna wait until the roads are dry and then I'm gonna take it out and test drive it. And then we'll do the adjustments. We can so one last thing to instruct and say to test before you take it out on the road is to swing the steering wheel 
all the way each way to make sure things are clear. And Mr. Crowell's going to watch while I turn the steering wheel. Looks great, looks good. Okay, so now we're gonna wait until the sun is shining and the roads are dry before we go to test drive and adjust it. Let's take a break for a day. Okay, so I used the tape trick, made two stops adjusting it a little bit. It was pulling to the left using the tape. So I moved the U-bolts to the right. I went too far and stopped a second time and moved it just a smidgen back to the left. And now it is staying straight. Quite comfortable to drive, even as I'm getting passed by a semi. So, I'm liking it. All right, there's another project complete. Um, installing the Safe T Plus was a little more difficult than I originally thought. I had some issues with the U-bolt um, on the driver's side spring. I, I think the holes were too skinny or the U-bolt was too wide. You kind of had to wiggle and force it up on there. Um, getting the U-bolts on the tie rod end was not difficult at all. And today it finally dried out, so I went out and test drove it. Um, had to adjust it twice. Uh, drove about five miles, pulled over, found a nice open area to stop safely. And it was pulling hard to the left, so I moved the uh, U-bolt side on the tie rod end to the right about a quarter of an inch, not very much and uh, started driving. Another four miles later, I realized I'd gone too far and I went back and moved it back a little bit, about a sixteenth of an inch, and got on the freeway, did about 45 miles and things straight as an arrow. Um, it bounces back to center very well. So I think I'm really gonna like having that Safety Plus on there. Um, my main thing about doing it was for a blowout, or blowout handling. Um, but anyhow, it's done. Um, a little more difficult than I thought, but I think that was just because of the U-bolt size uh, issue, but uh, you probably saw that in the video with me fighting it, but um, I think I'm going to be very happy with it. So thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, we are doing a couple more things to the RV before we leave, but in about six weeks, we're leaving for Southeast Canada, and uh, we'll be back to doing travel videos instead of maintenance videos. So uh, please subscribe if you want to follow along. Thanks and bye.